In this video, I will be doing a scratchboard portrait of John Lewis. Before starting the scratchboard rendering, I did a detailed pencil sketch of Lewis. I did this sketch to work out lighting and the structure of the face. I typically begin with just an outline sketch in pencil when doing a scratchboard portrait, but for this one, I wanted to see if I could add some of my own design structure. After doing the detailed sketch, I traced it in outline and transferred it to a piece of 11 inch by 14 inch clayboard. Now I start the scratchboard by outlining in ink, using the transferred pencil as a guide. Then I fill in all the areas that will end up being darker than 50% gray with solid black India ink. I will refer back to my detailed sketch when I start doing the finished rendering of the face. Here, I am starting to add some detail to the background. The background will be a leafy pattern, which will be a subtle representation of the cherry trees of DC. I use a pen to draw the leaf shapes around the outside of the pattern, the part where the sky will be peeking through. The leaves in the solid black part of the background will all be made with a scratchboard knife, which is akin to drawing with white on black. The leaf pattern will also serve to frame a quotation by Lewis, I will show the process of adding the quotation later in the video. The dome of the United States Capitol will be beyond the trees, way back in the distance. I don't want the Capitol to fight for attention with the portrait of Lewis, so, I will use atmospheric perspective to make the Capitol less prominent. I use ellipse templates to help draw the curves of the Capitol. The templates are awkward to use, but they help me get clean curves. And I use a T-square to draw the parallel lines of the sky. The clouds are done with a light stipple. Now I rule in parallel lines to start the shading of the face. Usually, I put these in freehand, but I have been experimenting lately with ways of laying in these lines in a more mechanical way. Here I use a T-square with a French curve attached. The French curve, unlike the normal straight edge, makes lines that more closely follow the contour of the face. I make a second pass with the T-square to beef up the lines in the shadow areas. After laying in the mechanical lines, I block in more areas with solid black, and then I go over the lines by hand. I'm still just blocking in the tones and not concerned yet about subtle changes in shading or with small details. I also scratch into some of the lines in the lightest areas. I won't get into the finished rendering of the face until the last stage. For now, I leave the face and move on to the suit and tie. I want to give the tie a subtle dot pattern, so I start by dabbing on little dots of liquid frisket, and I put these dots into a grid-like pattern. After the frisket dries, I brush in solid black over the entire tie. The liquid frisket protects the white scratch board from the ink. When the frisket is peeled away, white dots remain. However, in this case, the dots are bigger than I wanted, so I use a micron pen to make them smaller. Then, I put a tiny dot in the middle of each white dot and tiny white dots are scratched in between the main dots. Later, I will scratch in highlights for the tie to give it even more depth. Okay. I had a problem with the jacket. My intention was to mask off the jacket with airbrush frisket and airbrush in a spatter texture by setting the air pressure to the airbrush gun so low that it would spit out dots of ink instead of spraying a smooth tone. It should have produced something like a coarse stippling effect. However, I couldn't get the airbrush to spit out the dots. I know it should work because I used this technique when I was just getting started as an illustrator. Over 40 years ago. Here is an example of the texture I was able to get then. But now, no matter what I tried, I was not able to get it to work properly. So I removed all of the ink from the jacket. And, yes, you can make corrections like that with scratchboard. In fact, you can even sand the area and make it as smooth and perfect as the original board. After clearing the problem area, and getting it in good shape for re-inking, I start laying in a new pattern for the jacket. It will be a subtle stripe pattern. The pattern is made up of two bold black lines that are spaced very close together. Then, each set of these black lines are separated by a thick white line. The lines of the pattern are then drawn to conform to the contour of the jacket. With the lines roughly in place, they're gone over with an ink pen and knife to clean them up, and to make them thicker for shadow areas and thinner for lighter areas. To smooth out the look of the pattern, the entire pattern is covered with a cross hatching. A French curve attached to a T-square is used for this. Now, I start work on the background. 
Most of the time when doing a scratch board portrait, I just leave the background white. However, I decided to do something different for the background for this portrait, and I'm anxious to see if it works as well as I imagined it. I'm going to use a leaf pattern for the background texture. The leaves will provide a transition between Lewis and the Capitol building. However, it's not necessary for the pattern to represent actual trees. Think of the white strokes being used for the leaves as a kind of stippling, and that stippling will be used to give the background an irregular tonal range. For instance, I like to lighten the background where it meets the shadow edge of the portrait, and leave dark the areas of the background where it meets the highlight edge of the portrait. Perhaps the biggest reason I'm excited about this background is that I will be using my trademark knife marks to represent the leaves. I have never seen anyone else use this type of teardrop mark with scratch board. Maybe someone has, but if so, I haven't seen it yet. So, another reason for this background was to have a way to incorporate a quotation by Lewis without making the portrait look like some kind of ad or article. I wanted the quote to become part of the art, not a headline. So, I left an area in the leaf pattern that still has some of the leaf texture in it, but it is very subtle. Then I screen print the text into this space. The printing didn't work the way I had envisioned it, so I ended up drawing all the text by hand with the knife. It turned out to be a better solution because it gave the type a hand-drawn look, which helped make the text feel like part of the piece. I also redrew the leaves around the text to make everything work together. At this stage, everything in the drawing is basically finished, except for the face. But even as I work on finishing the face, I will continue to think about the background. Is there enough contrast between the face and background? Is the text readable? Should the leaf pattern have more areas of contrast? For instance, maybe the leaves in the lower right should be lighter to help balance with the lightness on the left side. And should I add some openings in the leaf pattern? But for now, I will start work on the face. There's not a lot of line work that has to be done to finish the face but, nevertheless, this is the most important part of the whole drawing. This is also the hardest part to record on video, because I spend a lot of time here just looking at the drawing and trying to figure out what's working and what's not. For instance, I'll squint my eyes while looking at the drawing, which blurs the image and helps me see how readable the drawing is. Can I quickly understand what's going on? Or, I may lay the drawing on the floor at my feet next to my drawing board and then face forward. Then, I will give the drawing a quick look. This helps me see the drawing as if for the first time, which helps me see what a first impression of the drawing might be. Another way to check the readability of a drawing is with a reduction glass. A reduction glass is a magnifying glass in reverse. It makes things look smaller than they are. Most artists work about twice the size as what the reproduction size will be when doing art for print. The reduction glass is a good way to see what the drawing will look like when printed. My latest method for checking the readability of the drawing is with my video camera. I already have the camera set up for making the video, so I hook the camera to a TV on my wall where I can take a quick look at any time. I have the camera pointed at the drawing and out of focus, which blurs the image, and the TV is a few feet away. Seems to be an excellent way for checking the drawing. I move ahead now with the final touches on the portrait. One thing I've decided to do is to play with the lighting on the face. I want the face to be in light on one side and in shadow on the other half. Almost like the portrait is split in half between the lightness and the darkness. This will symbolize his life's mission of fighting against injustices. John saw things as being either right or wrong, black or white, and when he saw things that were wrong, he stood up to correct them. Then, on the background, I make some openings in the mass of leaves to help it look like they are groups of trees that are between the portrait and the capital. I want the leaves to represent a living, growing thing, and not just a pattern. That's pretty much it. I think I've done everything I can to represent the personality of Congressman Lewis. Here's the finished piece. John Lewis describes, good trouble. It's very simple to me. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have an obligation to say something, to do something. We cannot afford to be silent.